Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Hanging out here in the office, getting ready for our second KGNC Live Lounge. And this is so exciting to get to do this. Um, and I fort fortunately, we couldn't do this without you guys. Um, everybody we brought on, we were supposed to have Lainey Wilson on last week and uh, she got sick. So we're going to put her in July somewhere. She is actually rescheduled. Um, but the guys that are coming up tonight are very exciting. And I've known them both for quite a while. Um, they were found by Toby Keith. And Toby decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to put a little time behind these guys. And he really has. These guys have served their time. Um, they are incredible musicians, uh, both in the state of Texas. Um, George and Cody are two good guys. And you're going to find out exactly what I'm talking about. We actually play one of their songs here on KGNC. Uh, and it's Waterloo Revival, and the song we play is Something You Ain't Ever Had. And I'm sure we're going to talk them into doing that song. But without further ado, um, let's uh, let's uh, let's unmute uh, the boys and bring them in. Waterloo Revival hanging out with us. What are you guys doing? What's up? Welcome to the back porch. What's up, guys? Are we on the back porch of your, uh, whose house are we at? Oh, this is mine. We had the blinds closed because I moved in last week, so it's an absolute wreck in there. But <laughs> I saw, nice. I saw good. that. I saw that move in. That's a that's a nice place, George. You guys did good. Oh, thank you, man. It ain't exactly MTV Cribs over here, but we're excited about it. <laughs> it's better than some of the places that that I've lived in. So, <laughs> so what's been going on with you guys? How how have you guys been? I mean, we've been good. It's, it's been nice getting to spend a little bit more time with family more than anything. And I mean, George and I still see each other all the time. We're yeah. doing doing 4th of July together and uh, really just like kind of enjoying a little bit of pause and also been in studio working on new music. So it's been a, it's been a fun time. Honestly. So has it been, has it been fun? Lo, we kind of got into this conversation before we went live. Um, has it been fun being at home? Now, I know there's a second part to that, but have you enjoyed being able to be at home with the family? We got a great first two weeks. <laughs> that took too long for you to answer. I can guarantee you, George, like, mm, mm. The it depends on who's watching this. The first two weeks, uh, yeah, it's a lot. But uh, you know what? It's like we're closer than we've ever been. And um, you just kind of got to get creative every day. I've got two little guys, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And uh, with no daycare, no babysitters. Um, I don't know if y'all heard that. The What was it? Lone Star? Uh, Mr. Mom? That's what I feel like right now, man. <laughs> well, that is that is really, that's really good. So we were talking about this before we went live about it's not easy to do what you guys do because everybody's like, oh, uh, People who work in restaurants, waiters, waitresses, bartenders, they're, they're not getting paid. Um, musicians are not getting paid either. And when you're, you guys spend your time on the road, um, in a regular year, what's a regular year for you guys out on the road? How many dates are you doing a year? I mean, we, not we, counting we, 2020. What, what's a regular year? We were, we were pretty much scheduled to be out at least three to four days a week the entire summer. So being home right now, I mean, that's that's two to three shows a week generally. But we had, you know, festivals lined up, all that. Um, wow. But I can't think of another summer moving forward that we're going to get to spend as much time home. So it's been nice. Probably a once in a lifetime sort of opportunity with our career. Wow. That's but that's You're such a positive. Yeah, that's yeah I know. Like, that is really <laughs> a positive way of looking at it. Yeah. Well, why don't you give uh, the folks a little background on how this all, how did this get started? How did you two find each other? How did it all happen? How did we find each other? <laughs> <laughs> so we've been buddies since like uh, sixth grade, probably. We met in middle school um, in Austin, Texas. And um, Cody played guitar. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And we just kind of were bonded over music. And so, um, you know, we would sit in our rooms in middle school and, you know, trade records. And then it turned into Cody kind of teaching me how to play a little bit of guitar. And then it turned into writing songs together. And by high school, we had a band. And um, if y'all have ever been to Austin, you know, Sixth Street's a big music scene. So we kind of grew up playing on Sixth Street with X's on our hands. 
And um, we went to college different places. Cody went to North Texas and Dallas, and I went to uh, UT. Um, but we kind of, you know, winter break, summer break, stuff like mm-hmm. that, we would still make music together or send each other song ideas. And so after college, uh, we both tried to, like, be responsible and get jobs. And, uh, you know, even as boring as that was, we would still <laughs> kind of work. Uh, on Thursday <laughs> and Friday nights. And um, we never really toured. We would just play Austin or Dallas. And um, we kind of started getting these big fan bases uh, in our hometowns to where they weren't huge venues, but our little dive bars that we would play would be sold out every night. And mm-hmm. that buzz kind of worked its way up to Nashville. And um, eventually Toby Keith's manager flew down to see us play. Um, and was like, y'all are better than you think. You need to quit your jobs and move to Nashville and sign a record deal. And um, it took us about 30 seconds to, <laughs> to quit our jobs. When, when, T, when TK speaks, everyone listens. Yeah, yes. that's right, man. <laughs> Uh, you didn't have to ask me twice to quit that job. So uh, that's what we did. And we moved up here to Nashville and we've been here a couple years now. And now we've got a song on the radio and we get to tour with Toby and play festivals. And um, it's just, it feels like we are living um, uh, some alternate reality, but it's where we feel so blessed to be able to do it. It's really, really cool, man. Well, cool. I want you guys to do a couple songs. I'll, I want you to save something you ain't ever had for your second song. Yeah, um, Pick what um, what was the first song you guys ever learned together? Like, so you guys have to do. I don't know you have to do it right now, but what was the song you guys? Because you guys had to put a band together to play out, so you guys had to probably do quite a few cover tunes to be able to cover. <laughs> so, what was the go-to cover song? Oh, That's a good man. question. We had a bunch. I mean, we played Marshall Tucker Band. Can mm-hmm. you see? That was like the go-to, like when you're first stringing a couple yeah. chords together and you feel right. like you're the man singing that song. Midnight yeah. Rider. Yeah, Midnight Rider. Um, oh, we would like, uh, yeah. Texas Country, we'd cover Bart Crow Band, Wear My Ring, yeah. which was always, you know, <laughs> right. that was one that was would always bring the house down. And um, Randy gosh, Rogers. Randy Rogers, Brooks and Dunn, Red Dirt Road um, is one that we still cover today. Um, and then the first song that we wrote together um, that like really – you know, made a big impact for us um, was Hit the Road, which was what got us our record deal and got us, you know, moved to Nashville, which is pretty cool. That That is, that in itself is good. Well, pick one, um, pick one you want to do. And I'm going to get out, I'm going to obviously get out of the frame, shut my mic off and let you guys uh, entertain. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Waterloo Revival, everybody. Yeah. So oh, hold uh, on, wait, hold on. I went the wrong, <laughs> I went the wrong direction. Picking us out? <laughs> no, I kicked, <laughs> I kicked, I kicked myself out. I, I was like, nope, it's it's all me. Let's try that one more time. So, oh, yeah, you thank you guys so much for hanging with us. Yeah. Um, we're going to play Back to You. This is a song um, about growing up in Texas and all of our kind of favorite hangout spots. And when we um, recorded our last EP, we started thinking, well, that was a place that had so much influence on us growing up. We wanted to make it sure, give a shout out to our hometown. But when we started thinking about like the spots we would go after football games or where we'd park our cars with our girlfriends or where we'd go eat on the weekends, um, it wasn't just like where we were, but it was the people that we were there with. And that's kind of um, what inspired this song. So it's called Back to You. This phone rat turned off a map of Nero. That last cold de sac where the grass was overgrown. Didn't love the city, we could see the stars. It wasn't much, but that's about what was ours. I still drive by every now and then, and just like that. It takes me back to skipping racks down at Old Blue Creek. Headlight dancing on our bare feet. Sneaking whiskey inside a coaching blue. It takes me back to the backseat of that 93 Black Hole. Looking back, baby, where did the time go? No matter where I'm headed, to every road I'm riding. It takes me back to you. Well, I still eat down in Magnolia K. 
cafe Where they burn the toast Cause you like it that way And talk all night in that corner booth We're out 18 on that old school jukebox Now every time I hear that track It takes me back It takes me back to Skip racks down at Old Book Creek Little life dancing on their feet Sneaking whiskey inside a ghost Tears me back to the backseat of that 93 park oh, Looking back, maybe where did the time go? No matter where I'm headed, so I'm ever rolling around Tears me back to you Spreading now bleachers, carving our names in that old tree, girl. Well, everything I do, it takes me back. It takes me back to skipping racks out at Old Book Creek. Little life dancing in my bed feet. Sneaking whiskey inside the ocean blue. It takes me back to the backseat of that 93 Paco. Looking back, baby, where did the town go? No matter where I'm at, to every road I ran, it takes me back to you. Ooh, it takes me back to you. Mm. Yeah. Look at you guys. Yeah, you've done that before a couple times. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, I, I've always been excited to, I've always been a fan of yours, both you guys. And it was exciting to see you guys getting to uh, put out more music. And I think we're, I'm going to open this up. Uh, while we chat a little bit, I'm going to see if people want to ask uh, questions. <laughs> I can always count on our night guy, uh, Zach Grantham, who is very special. Um, his mother is the only one that loves him. And, <laughs> I had a lot of friends like that. Yeah, and uh, so he's got a he he's got a question. In fact, I'll pop it up on your screen here. There you go. Let me zoom in. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, you even see it? I'll read it to I you. You don't get up on it. Or Mexican food. Oh dang. Well, seventeen Zach and a half years. This is how weird he is. Well, Zach thought he had us uh, busted there, but little did he know the Texas is famous for brisket tacos, man. So, and nachos. Yeah, which are right. really. <laughs> Zach you know. is a, yeah, Zach is a special kind of guy. <laughs> you can't put us in the corner. Probably yeah. Mexican food. Cody and I love cheap tacos and cheap beer. Um, we do that at least a couple times a week. Um, and whenever we're stopping in places with good Mexican food, you know, like authentic Mexican food, that's always a place we'll stop for breakfast right. or lunch. And, right. uh, you know, we try not to drink beer with breakfast, but we will drink beer <laughs> with lunch. So it's, <laughs> that's a nice thing about Mexico. Well, you gotta, you gotta say it's, it's, you know, they serve beer all over the place. Not just, not just, you know, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, George has a, he's got a smoker and he's actually pretty good at making a brisket. So yeah. I feel like we can at least get our barbecue brisket. Fixed. Oh, hold, hold on. I think, hold on. Zach, Zach said brisket is amazing. So yes. yes. So we got brisket fix taken care of here. So it's the Tex-Mex fix. It's usually kind of hard to find here in Tennessee. Yeah. Now I, you know, be, yeah. Getting a chance to hang around Nashville. I know that, it, I mean, no, yeah, they're just, Chewy's doesn't count. I mean, that <laughs> it is really good though. It's yeah. really good. It's well, great. Yeah. Okay. They got the green sauce and, yeah. and yeah, I, yeah, I'll, I'll give it to them. But yeah, I mean, but I mean, when you, when you live in Texas, you get spoiled. Well, to you like gotta really, like a hole in the walls. You know what I mean? When it's a dollar for a taco and a dollar for a beer, right? Right. I and still walk and, out spending hundred dollars. Truly, <laughs> yeah, I know. And uh, it truly, majority of the of the the menu is not even in English. That's when you know. <laughs> that's that's, good. that's yeah. when you know it's incredible food. Exactly. I, I, hold, hold on, Zach's got another. 
Zach said, who are some of your musical influences? Oh, man. Um, I know that, like, growing up, uh, and my dad still has this F-150, but um, he had an F-150 when they first, like, the first year they got the six-disc CD player. And uh, he had Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, um, the Leanne Rimes Blue album, and Carlos Santana's Greatest Hits in there. And I listened to all four of those for 10 years on repeat. I didn't even know he had radio in his car. That was just those four <laughs> CDs on repeat. So they, they have to be influences on me. Uh, that was that was pretty incredible growing up. And then um, George Strait, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Um, oh, yeah. On some, some of the more current stuff, like um, we're huge fans of Cole Swindell. We think he kills it. We think Thomas Red is amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, grow, growing up, my dad uh, was born in Alabama, raised in, like, Alabama and Texas, and so everything from, like, Skinner to uh, Allman Brothers, all that sort of stuff, I guess what you call Southern Rock, was mm -hmm. sort of what I grew up learning guitar-wise and everything like that. And, yeah, I mean, when it comes to modern people, yeah, like you said, Cole, Thomas, Rhett, everybody like that. When I we were first that... getting started, we really tried to model, model ourselves off of Eli Young fancy. We thought those guys were absolutely amazing. Well, so, I mean... When Cody went to school, did you go to school at UNT when they were there? Was that the same uh, time? They had just left, but they were still like a really big deal in Denton just because, I mean, that's kind of what they right. call for all that. And so, we, I mean, within our first couple of years in Nashville, we played a lot of shows with them. So, yeah, was cool when, I was, when I was at the Twister there in Dallas, that was when they really started uh, to popping. And we would always, we'd have them out at shows all the time. And we could be guaranteed, even if we would have a, smaller Nashville act that would come in, we could always be guaranteed that they would bring in a crowd. It didn't matter who's like, oh yeah, oh well, we can get EYB. And it was either him, them, you know, and this was when Randy was just really starting to pop. And of course, Pat was really huge, obviously in Texas. And then he signed his deal uh, with Sony. And so it was kind of neat to watch these guys, uh, you know, come up from Texas. There's a lot of talented people yeah. in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. I found that being in Texas and you'd be surprised. There's a lot of, of musical talent. And if you look at part of the chart um, are from Georgia. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of Tom folks. Yeah. You Thomas Rhett and Jason and Luke and Cole Swindell yeah. uh, Pitt Moore. There's a lot of them. And uh, cause we did a similar show in Atlanta where I played a lot of Georgia music and, you know, and, and, uh, and now we do Texas. Um, but what are two hubs, man, Texas and Georgia, Seems like they, they really are. And, you yeah. know, and everybody races to live in Tennessee because they think, Oh, well I'll get discovered here. You, if you throw a guitar up in downtown Nashville, whoever caught it could play it and they probably play it better than you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. True. We and talk like, about that here. I mean, we came in like thinking that we were, you know, I, I don't think we ever like thought that we were, you know, too good for anybody. But we came in thinking we had enough talent to hang, and oh, we yeah. got the guitar kicked out of us for the, in the songwriting rooms. The first couple <laughs> of years, we were like, we have no idea. I couldn't imagine how intimidating that would be. And you plus, how sit on your bed and you're like, man, I suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? I. And, Get a little better and a little better, but yeah, it's it's the best of the best here. That's it's what I told a lot of people. I said, you know, um, you will see people, and you guys know this. You will go walk down on Lower Broadway, and there will be people that will be playing on Lower Broad that will never see the light of day as far as country radio or ever be a household name. But there's some of the most I've seen some of the most talented people playing on Lower Broadway that you just yeah, yeah you would never you will never know their names. You'll never. Um, and the only reason I know a few of them just because um, just from the familiarity of being down there and seeing them. Yeah. But uh, so let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Our once again, Zach is at it again. Caleb is our midday guy. And he says that Caleb was discovered as a professional harmonica player in Pampa, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> this, we got to contact if we ever need harmonica. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, this is this is this is for when we want to do a blues traveler uh, cover. Yeah. Anytime you need somebody, yeah. See, he's just now. Yeah. Now he's just on. Now he's on a roll. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, Caleb, finally a normal question. Caleb is our afternoon guy and he's not Zach. Um, he said, where's your favorite place to spend the 4th of July? Oh man. Lake Travis. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. That's where we would always go. Um, every summer was Lake Travis, um, uh, growing up in Texas. And that was just always a killer fireworks show at, uh, Carlos and Charlie's rest in peace. Mm -hmm. It's no longer there, but no man, longer there. It's no. spots. I did, <laughs> um, Brad Paisley shot the water video there. And oh, I, that was so fun, man. I went down there and that, I don't remember much besides that. I got, I went down there to that and the rest of it was kind of a, a haze. Oh, sounds man. about right. I heard, I heard I was in the video somewhere, but I don't, I couldn't honestly tell you where I, am. <laughs> but yeah, that water video was, was a lot of fun. Um, so guys, I, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Oh, hang on. By the way, uh, George, I think someone behind you, you had one of your kids was pulling on the curtains. <laughs> he, little George. Uh, <laughs> he likes and, to make a cameo every now and then. Yeah, well, when you were singing a while ago, one of them like went, pulled the camera, and they were looking the whole time you were singing. And, like, and then all of a sudden they go back. It was, it was, that was great. I just want to tell you, you have, a, you have someone behind you. He's very jealous that he's not out here jamming with us because he he's usually welcome, likes to be. He's welcome to be a part of the jam anytime. He likes to be about one foot in front of Uncle Cody. Usually. <laughs> Just like standing. Like, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. So give me the, give me the backstory on something you ain't ever had. So um, this was a song that um, we've written basically everything that we've put out to this point. And um, we kind of pride ourselves as songwriters. So we're not usually looking for songs. Um, but this one was sent to us and it just like immediately jumped off the page to us. We try to like kind of pride ourselves on um, big positive energy in our shows. And that we felt like that jumped off the speakers the first time we heard the song. And we talked to the songwriters and made sure they were comfortable with us kind of taking a turn and making it ours and making it um, sound like a Waterloo Revival song. And so we spent a couple of weeks in the studio really working on it and digging into it. And uh, when we turned in the finished product to the label, um, it was just a unanimous yes from everybody. And um, that's kind of been the reaction since we've taken, it's been at radio two weeks now and we've had more big stations add this record than anything we've ever put out. So um, it's, uh, I mean, it's doing hundreds of thousands of streams every couple yeah, of weeks now. I mean, it's just, um, I think we're going to, I think we may have just passed a million streams on it in the first mm -hmm. few weeks. So it's, um, we can't even keep up with the numbers, but it's it's really exciting, man. It's um, it's that's it's, not a bad problem to yeah, have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, usually we can count them, so we're excited to not be able to. When it's above, when there's so many zeros and so yeah. many, yeah, then I get lost. <laughs> yeah, it's so that's got that's got to make you feel good because you know, okay, all this work and you're starting to see putting in all this time, moving your families, and then you're starting to see, hey, this is actually starting to build into something. Absolutely. And that that's got to that's got to be good. At least that's that's got to feel good. You guys got a good group of people that that, you know, represent you and uh, do, do a good job of selling you uh, to radio. I will be happy to say we've been on this record since day one. You're and right. uh, it means the world to us. Thank that you was guys. exciting. That was exciting to be able to uh, to to text George because. Cody, Cody doesn't share his phone number with people. Uh, <laughs> He's too I'm kidding. handsome for that. I'm kidding. Really I had uh, no, I had George's number, and I happened and I noticed us. And when I saw the song come across, it, well, yes, let's let's do this. So I wrote him and said, "Hey, guess what? Um, you're going in this week." And I, I'm not even sure if it was officially even out yet. I think I might have been that early. Yeah, yeah, you were. But, um, so you were the we first person to put the song on the air. And um, I mean, if this song ends up being a big hit for that, I hope that's a, I hope you'll remember that because that's pretty dang cool. I do. I do. And I will. And, and, and when this is, and I always tell people, as long as you spell your name, state, uh, spell my name correctly on the plaque. You got <laughs> it, man. You got it. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's let you do that song. And it is, it is a song you hear. Um, I'm going to say exclusively because I don't, I think it's the only place you're hearing it here in uh, Amarillo. Something you ain't ever had, and this is my friend's Waterloo okay. Revival. Whatever you 
want it, you got it. I'm at your command, whatever you feel, I could heal it. If you let me be your man, cause you've got the looks and you've got the smile. You've got the most driving man wild. You got me up, but you already take it. It's got me thinking. What you need is a brand new feeling. What you need is a brand new man. What you need is probably something you ain't ever had. What you need is an all night loving. This ain't no one night stand. What you need is probably something you ain't ever, you ain't ever had. He's got you guard, cold hearted, and you wanna break free. Get back to your roots and let loose, and you'll finally be able to breathe. But he's got the looks and he's got the style. He's got the right that's driving you wild. You got the heart you don't deserve breaking. He's got me thinking. What you need is a brand new feeling. What you need is a brand new man. What you need is probably something you ain't ever had. What you need is an all night loving. But this ain't no one that stand. What you need is probably something you ain't ever, you ain't ever. Solid as the ground you're walking on. I'll be the hand that's always hanging on. Love is waiting for you while you're gone. Something you ain't ever. You ain't ever What you need is a brand new feeling What you need is a brand new man What you need is probably something You ain't ever had What you need is an all-night But this ain't no one-night stand What you need is probably something You ain't ever you ain't ever what you need. What you need. You ain't ever. You ain't ever. Whatever you want, God, I'll match your command. Whatever you feel, I could heal it. If you let me be your man. that is awesome i love that thank you and that is that's so neat to be able to see you guys do that and you can you can see the the how much you love doing what you do and that's that's neat to see and it's, uh, a, it's a special thing man music is i mean especially in the times that we're living in it's an escape and um it's something that you know, sometimes the business gets old, um, but playing it sure doesn't. No. You know? When you love what you do, yeah, then you don't ever really work. No. I mean, and that in that the old the old saying that you you if you work, you love what you do, you never work another a day in your life. Oh, hold on, uh, I can said work hard so you can make money. I think is what he told me. <laughs> You know, uh, Zach, up, whatever he told me to do, yeah. Zach was giving Caleb a hard time about uh, being a harmonica player, but according to Caleb, he was actually offered a chance to play in a mariachi band when she was he, when he was in high school. Oh, man, so, now you, you, you realize Caleb is multifaceted, so you may have to add him to some of your auxiliary players when you guys get back. To <laughs> also, brings us back to another point from earlier in the show: mariachi band. Uh, another point to Mexican food. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You're yeah. you're gonna make me have to stop off for that on the on the <laughs> way home now. So any uh when you guys get back to normal, let's when uh are you gonna try to do shows? Maybe do maybe we've got a couple we saw what happened to we saw what happened to Chase Rice. So we also know not what not to do. Sure, sure. We've and, got some COVID friendly shows coming up. Um, 
a couple of just music lovers um, after a private party, that, um, yeah. you know, are going to have us come play some private parties that are um, a little more private. Um, and we're doing live streams to try to get some music out there. Um, but we've got, I mean, we don't really have a firm date of like big sold out crowd yet. Right. Um, One and, of those each, each month that keeps getting pushed back, pushed yeah. back. So we've got, you know, temporary holds in September and October, but who really knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be, that's got to be, I mean, you want to get out there. I mean, and I understand I wasn't, I, I, that probably came off wrong. I wasn't slamming Chase Rice. I know people want to get out there, mm -hmm. um, but we are, the numbers are spiking again. I mean, you yeah. guys know that the numbers are spiking again and to put that many people in one room is just really dangerous. It's just reckless right now. Um, I mean, I would love to, I would love to get you guys here. Um, we won't be there. Yeah. I mean, shoot. I think the ticket is, um, you just get everybody to come out in scuba gear, you know, <laughs> and it it just with a face mask and an oxygen tank, and then we can all get as close as we can. Yeah, in our own <laughs> perspective. <laughs> <all> <laughs> <way out>. Exactly. <laughs> we could get you to come out here. Um, you know, the big the the big Texan has a place here, and of course, we could get you to eat one of those seventy two ounce steaks and and uh, get you to play a show. So twist our arms, do it. They have a. Uh, yeah, they have a a place that they've been bringing artists in um, and talk about, and it's it's safe. It's it's safe. They've been they, I'm sure they're going to slow down a little bit, but they've been trying to start slowly bringing artists in. And yeah. uh, but I want I want to drop your name for that if you, if you guys would be cool to come in and hanging yeah. out and you got my sure. number. Come eating on. A, yeah, <laughs> I think the big thing is uh, putting you both in the uh, 72 ounce steak uh, challenge. Uh, Zach always is, uh, excited to take on any artists and when, when, uh, eating. So hey, as long as we eat it after, after the show. Yeah. 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 After. Oh, oh, totally after. I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Oh man. <laughs> On the Toby Keith tour uh, a couple years ago, uh, that was our first experience with like a really big tour with nice catering every night. And uh, I mean, we're a couple starving artists at that time. We'd just gotten our record deal. We, we, I mean, so we walk in there and it's T-bone steaks and lobster macaroni and dessert and everything. And our eyes are as big as saucers. And we go in there and just destroy that buffet. So, and we've got to be on stage in front of 30,000 people 45 minutes later. And we walk on stage just dripping sweating. in sweat. So that was a rookie move we had, had to learn from. <laughs> so you wait until after your set's done. Yeah. Then you load. Then you load. That's, up. That's a ticket. Yeah, I've I've been I've been backstage where those the I mean that catering is a, is amazing. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of people make those exact same comments saying, <laughs> "Oh yeah, eat, load up, and then you get out there and eat, and then you you sweat like someone like you took a shower." Yeah, in your clothes, <laughs> and then he's like, "Why do why do I smell like chicken?" <laughs> so we figured out the secret is you make a to-go box with everything you want and you put it on the bus Yeah, waiting for you after the show and it's, and, and you have a great show and then you're hungry afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Well guys, I appreciate you taking time and, and doing this. Um, we're going to, we'll share this out on our, um, on our social media as well. So you, we'll get a lot of eyeballs on it. So everybody will get a chance to see uh, who we're, who we're talking with and who we get to, who I was excited to get to spend some time with you guys. And I appreciate you doing that. We've been at this about 30 minutes and that's about kind of the maximum of what we like to do. But thank you very much for, for doing that. And I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day. And I, I appreciate George. I appreciate your son uh, jumping in there and <laughs> pulling the curtain back. One for y'all next time. Well, I, I saw the video of you. Uh, you taught him how to ride a bike. Yeah. Yep. He, well, we're still working on it. I, he, uh, the brakes, that's our next lesson. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Who needs those? Yeah. Well, you gotta, you gotta give him some credit. It's confusing when you're pedaling like this and then you're telling him to pull back the other way to stop it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So he crashed into his little brother uh, yesterday. <laughs> which is, <laughs> that's basically what life is right now. So we're working on it. <laughs>
And when they do stuff like that, it's hard not to laugh at them. Oh, you know? man. yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Be like, and why, you know, where you're going, why didn't I have my phone going? <laughs> <laughs> but he is, he is diehard music fan now. And he's gotten to the point where he asked me if he can listen to our demos and he'll tell me if he likes them or not. So he's <laughs> our, our original A&R over here right now. Got very that. important. <laughs> very important. Well, give my best to your families. Thank you so much for doing this with us. I could not, like I say, I can't do it without you. And thank you. Thank you so much for the music. And thank you for taking the time and doing this. I, it, well, I, hey, we're glad, glad to do it. Yeah, uh, thank, you. thank you so much for the home state support. We're Texas proud. And thanks for having us, guys. Thank you so much. Waterloo Revival, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys. Well, that was fun. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with us. That was uh, a lot of fun. I appreciate that. Uh, I know that uh, <laughs> Zach and Caleb and everybody in the in the uh, the uh, over here asking questions and stuff. But we will jump on and we will have some fun. And it'll be uh, we'll do it again next week. In fact, I think we look at my secret calendar. I think, fingers crossed, I've got somebody for next week. So, um, and we'll make that announcement. She should be letting me know in the next uh, day or so. So I'm looking at seventh, uh, eighth, or ninth. But we'll be having a lady on who is a heck of a guitar player. That'll be a hint. And so we'll be having her on probably next week. So be prepared for that. Thank you so much for spending time with us, guys. And have a great night. And we'll see you back here. Uh, Zach Grantham is still on till 11 o'clock tonight on KGNC. And then Big D and Bubba back up tomorrow morning starting at 5. Uh, Caleb's back in tomorrow. Excuse me, Big Tex. And I never can get used to calling him that. And we'll... But we got it all starting back over again for you. And I got to thank each and every one of you who take the time to write us on our Instagram and our Facebook and tell us what you're loving about the station. And even those who write with uh, your questions or comments or whatnot, we love that. So thank you. Keep those coming. And we will see you next time and next week for another KGNC Live Lounge. We appreciate you tuning in.